whatever your particular situation is, my question to you is this. What does God gain by your being here? What is the benefit of your existence in the kingdom? What is your added value in the kingdom of God? Is your time useful to God? You know, people would say things like, yeah, but you know, it's so hard to find time to pray. I'm like, what happened to your time? You lost it. And if in 24 hours you cannot find time for your creator, the one who made you, the one you depend on, then you've lost the plot. You need to go back to the basics and learn again who this God is, whom you are serving. Faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. We've been talking about faithfulness and this is the second episode in this series on faithfulness. You know, faithfulness is one of the greatest virtues that we can ac acquire as believers. I'm Pastor Bola Ogedengbe and this is Passion for God coming to you from Paris, France. You know, the Lord is faithful. This is one of the great descriptions that we give to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We say that God is faithful. Faithfulness is connected to the word emit, which means truthful, which means that which is constant, that which is loyal, that which is dependable and reliable and does not vary. And we've talked about the fact that the, the, the attributes of God are made all the more extraordinary by their constancy, the fidelity of God. And there are these attributes of God that should be embodied by humans as well. And faithfulness is one of them. Mercy is one of them. Goodness, love, and faithfulness is a cardinal virtue. In fact, I say that faithfulness, the message on faithfulness is one of the most important messages that you need to listen to as a believer. So we are called to be faithful. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that Jesus was faithful as a son over all God's house. So Jesus was faithful. He was faithful in the incarnation. He was faithful throughout his walk on the earth. He was faithful to go to the cross and suffer horrendous punishment for sins that were not his own. He was faithful to come out of the grave and he was faithful to send us the promised Holy Spirit. And we are called to be imitators of Christ. And in talking about faithfulness, the faithfulness that God requires of us, we have talked about four dimensions of faithfulness, touching on the first one, which is faithfulness in our relationship with God. There is a call into prayer, a call into intimacy with God, a call into collect prayer. And as we practice these things, we are walking in faithfulness. There is faithfulness in our relationship with God in terms of, uh, there's faithfulness in walking in the truth as well. That's a part of the relationship that we have with God in terms of obedience to Christ. And not only that, but as to what we actually believe about Jesus, we don't change it to suit our environment. We don't let other people fashion our image of Jesus. And as we talk about faithfulness in our relationship, the other thing we need to keep in mind is that if we are to be faithful in our relationship with the Lord, we must be faithful in our conduct, the way we, we conduct ourselves. The Bible tells us that we are to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord. This has been for me one of my life scriptures, that the way I act, the way I talk, the way I, I, I uh, display myself, well, not display in that sense, but the way I conduct myself must communicate the greatness of the God that I serve. And so when we're faithful to God, we're faithful in our conduct. And as we are faithful in our conduct, in obedience, in compliance with his purposes and his wills, in the way we carry ourselves, in living moral lives, we are heightening and deepening our relationship with him. Faithfulness is also faithfulness in terms of spiritual growth. We have a responsibility to grow. People don't see faithfulness in that respect. They think spiritual growth is something that just happens to me. No, I cultivate spiritual growth. I choose to grow and I do the things that make for spiritual growth. I do them consistently and I am faithful to meditate on the word, faithful to be in prayer, faithful to do, to fast, faithful to do all these things that will make me spiritually powerful. Why? Because I have a 
responsibility to my generation. I have a responsibility to carry a measure of God and a measure of spiritual power that will enable me to do what Jesus has called me to do. That will enable me to be a helper of men. And so to be, to grow spiritually, we need to be faithful. Now, the second dimension of faithfulness is faithfulness in administration of resources. Let me read a passage to you. It says in Luke 16, verses 10 to 12, whoever is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And whoever is unrighteous in very little is also unrighteous in much. So if you have not been faithful with the unrighteous money, who will trust you? with what is genuine. And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to someone else, who will give you what is your own? This is a powerful passage on faithfulness. Jesus enjoins us to be faithful. And he gives us a a, a context for this faithfulness. He begins by telling us that there's, there's a place where Little will be required of you. Little will be entrusted to you. And in that place of little, You are being watched to see how you conduct yourself. You are being assessed to see how you actually execute whatever responsibilities are allotted to you. This is fundamental because many of us think that when the little things come into our lives, where they're not that important, I can be casual about them. But we can never be casual about things. When these relate to God and his desires for our lives, we must take them very seriously. Jesus is saying to us here that if little things are entrusted to you and you don't show yourself faithful, then it is obvious that you will not be faithful in the greater things. Whoever is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. You know, sometimes people say, well, I I cannot tithe because I, I don't have a big income. And I say to people, if you cannot tithe on a small income, you will not tithe on a big income because it will seem to you to be too much money. Too much money. And why am I talking about this? Because Jesus goes on to talk about the fact that people have to be faithful with unrighteous money. He says, and first he says, whoever is unrighteous in very little is also unrighteous in much. And that's another thing that we don't think about because sometimes we're given things to do. We, that, that we, there are things that we're supposed to attend to. We're casual and we wonder why are they being so harsh? Why are they being so difficult in their assessment of me? But it's only this. And, and the Lord is saying, no, it's not just only that because that basically demonstrates what is inside of you, that you are fundamentally an unfaithful person. And if you're unfaithful here, you'll be unfaithful somewhere else. And then Jesus goes on to demonstrate this unfaithfulness in respect to money. He says, if you have not been faithful with the unrighteous money, who will trust you with what is genuine? There's another translation that says, who will trust you with true riches? In other words, there are money is the, the, the smallest thing. It's not something on which you should fail a test. And so if, if this kind of thing is, you, if you show yourself unfaithful where money is concerned, it's quite obvious that there are greater riches. There are wonderful things that will not come to you because you have not been faithful with money. And I explained this when I was teaching this in our church that many people will think, okay, if I've been faithful with money, uh, then I'm going to get more money in return. And the Bible says, give and it will be given unto you. And it says, now we know the principle of sowing and reaping. So indeed, if you have been faithful to the Lord, you have honored him with your Lord, with your money, with your substance, he will honor you. But you see, we see a different bent in this passage. And I'm trying to open to the Amplified and, and read it to you from the Amplified. It says, he who is faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much. And he who is dishonest in very little thing, in a very little thing, is also dishonest in much. I guess the word dishonesty really strikes a bell for some people here. And then it says, therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of earthly wealth, do you see that? Who will entrust the true riches to you? So Jesus is saying earthly wealth uh, constitutes riches, but it's really the smallest level of wealth. It's the smallest level of good. 
And there are things much more important, of greater value, of greater significance, uh, things that are much superior to money that would be given to you if you show yourself to be faithful with money. And if you're not faithful with money, then you're going to miss out not just on what we call your harvest, from your sowing, but you're going to miss out on greater things, things of infinitely greater value than money if you have not been faithful with money. This should make us think because many people are unfaithful with money. They are unfaithful when it comes to giving. They are unfaithful when it comes to using their money to help other people. They are unfaithful when it comes to supporting the work of the church. They are unfaithful when it comes to bringing their tithes. They are unfaithful when it comes to bringing their offerings. They, they think that because they can do it, and nobody can see them. It does not matter. But then we notice that Jesus had a habit of looking at what people were giving. He was doing it when he was here physically. So he's obviously still doing it today. And so if we're not faithful in that, it means that we're losing out on things of much greater value than money. Let me keep reading to you from the Amplified. It says, and if you have not been faithful in the use of the earth, of that earthly wealth, which belongs to another, the earthly wealth is in bracket, but that which belongs to another, whether God or man, and of which you are a trustee, who will give you that which is your own? Do you see? And so we see here that this question of faithfulness is so vital. Jesus is going on to say, not only that you should be faithful with giving, not only should you ensure that you use your money for kingdom purposes, that you use your money, you administer your finances wisely, you do things properly when it comes to money, but that there are things that belong to other people that you will be asked to manage. And if you don't have the right heart, you don't, you're not faithful in the managing of those, then you're going to lose out on the things that belong to you that should come to you. I see people do this all the time when they're supposed to get involved in something that it's not directly connected to them. They drag their feet, they're lackadaisical about it. And then when it's them, they just get excited and get, 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 they want to start going. They, all of a sudden they get this fresh energy when it's for themselves. But Jesus is saying here that if we are not faithful when it's not for us and it's for somebody else, whether it's a person who needs your help for something, who wants you to put something together for them, and, and you know this is what the Lord wants you to do, but you decide to be shoddy and careless about it, you, you decide to be unfaithful about it, it says in essence that you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on something that should accrue to you. You're going to miss out on what the Lord would have given to you for yourself because of the careless way you handle that which belonged to somebody else. Th this happens all the time. And, and so, and, and the same thing goes for the Lord. People are so careless about the work of God and they, they, they do things badly. They bring a lot of loss to the work of the kingdom and they don't think it matters. But this is what we're saying here. If you're not, if you don't do the work of God properly, if you don't do the work of the kingdom properly, you're going to miss out on, on good things that should have come to you as a person. You're not going to get to handle some really significant things that would be yours personally because of the careless way in which you have handled the things of God. People don't see that there's a connection between their own lives and the good that comes to them and their faithfulness in the work of God. And it's very important that we realize this because many people think it's all about cash that's handed to you at the end of the month. So when they're serving the Lord, they're doing it casually, they're doing it carelessly, they're not bearing fruit, what they're doing is not working, it's not successful, and they don't care. They don't put themselves out, they drag their feet, they are lazy, they, they, and they lie, they pretend, and, and things just don't function the way they ought to function in, and because they have been entrusted with something that belongs to somebody else, something that belongs to God, something that belongs to a friend, something that belongs to a leader, something that belongs to the church, and there is no energy in them to do it while they are unfaithful and it does not work. And this, the Jesus says, will have ne negative impact on their own lives. I want you to pay attention to this because people don't see the correlation between what they, the way they handle the work of God and what happens in their own lives. And if they realize this, they would be more faithful in handling the work of God, in making sure that what is entrusted to them succeeds. They just think, oh, well, that's the way it is. They don't see that in essence, 
they are bringing destruction upon that which is there. So Jesus is saying, this is so powerful. I, I want you to pay attention. He is saying, if you have not been faithful in the use of that which belongs to another, and in the, in the bracket, in the amplified, it says whether God or man, and of which you, on which you are a trustee. So it could be money, it could be other things. You're a trustee. Who will give you that which is your own? So this means that when we're faithful in the work of God, there are things that God will give us for ourselves. There is a reward for faithfulness. But when we are not, then we will miss those things. I want you to think about that. I've spent more time on this passage than I intended to, but it's very important for us. When it comes to our money, it should serve kingdom purposes, not only personal purposes. We cannot just hoard it like the rich fool who, who thought, whoa, I have treasure stored up and then the Lord's, and the, the word of God for him was, you, you fool. This very night, your soul will be demanded of you. And so many people are like that. They're storing up everything for themselves and they're impoverishing the house of God. And then there are others who think that, who because of their great wealth refuse to step out and serve God, like the rich young ruler. And Jesus wanted him to give everything up and follow him. And he went away miserable, the Bible says, because he had many possessions. And so he, he was unfaithful towards Jesus because he preferred to hold on to his possession. So faithfulness in the administration of the resources entrusted to us, the, of which we are trustees, this is very important. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. And we're faithful with the use of money. We're faithful with our time. There are 24 hours in a day that God has given us. How do you use those 24 hours? How much of your day can God lay claim to? I, I ask this question often because people go through life day after day contributing precious little to the work of the kingdom, which is the only reason for which we are still here. And they're happy because they've, they, they've, they're earning seven figures, eight figures, nine figures, whatever. And they're doing very well, but none of the w doing well of their lives has any contribution, makes any contribution to the advancement of the work of God. Or some people will tell you what the wonderful things that are happening in their lives. Some people will tell you the miserable things happening in their lives. But whatever your particular situation is, my question to you is this. What does God gain by your being here? What is the benefit of your existence in the kingdom? What is your added value in the kingdom of God? Is your time useful to God? You know, people would say things like, yeah, but you know, it's so hard to find time to pray. I'm like, what happened to your time? You lost it. Did you lose a few hours in your day? Because I still have 24. All the people I know still have 24. What happened to the four hours? What happened to you? Someone took 10 hours off your day. Someone amputated your day because we still have 24 hours. And if in 24 hours you cannot find time for your creator, the one who made you, the one you depend on, then you've lost the plot. You need to go back to the basics. And learn again who this God is, whom you are serving. This is so important because we need to be faithful in the use of our time. Many of us today, we waste our lives on social media. We while away time watching stupid videos. And, and at times I have to restrain myself because I love all things politics. And the Lord many times has... Mm, kind of come down hard to, to stop all that because I was, I was doing too much of it and I had to refocus my mind so I would not waste my energy and waste my time. And many people are wasting their time on social media, wasting their time on YouTube, wasting their time on Facebook, wasting their time on Instagram. And then they will tell you they don't have time to serve God. And then the work that they are given to do takes forever to be done. And they will tell you, no, but you don't, but it, it's, it was because it was, it took a long time. They won't tell you just how many hours they wasted on social media. How much of your time are you giving to God? How much of your time are you wasting? How much of your time are you giving to the devil watching stupid films that are polluting your mind and making it hard for you to pray, making it hard for you to focus on the things of the kingdom? We must ask ourselves some very hard questions because this generation is a self-indulgent generation that always has a reason to complain. So it's important for us to know that we must be faithful in the use of our time. How much of your time is devoted to God? How much of it is devoted to self? And how 
how much of it is devoted to unrighteous pursuits. Think about it. We must be faithful in the use of our gifts. We'll talk um, in the next program about the parable of the man who was going away on a journey and handed gifts, handed um, his possessions to his disciple, to his servants. We're going to talk about that because there are many things. We all know the parable of the talents. We all know how God, how, how God, well, the, 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 the man in the picture represents God handed these, these talents to his servants and they were supposed to do something with them. They were supposed to be fruitful to do something useful with them. And and two of them did something useful and the, the last one did not. So what are you doing with the resources that you have? What are you doing with the gifts that you have? What are you doing with the resources entrusted to you? Are you using them for his glory, for, for kingdom purposes? Are you using them in his own way? If we're faithful in what belongs to another, how faithful are you in the work of God? Does the work of God advance in your care? Or does it regress? Does it progress or does it regress? And so all of these areas are areas of faithfulness that we must bear in mind. The third area of faithfulness is faithfulness in service. Let's, uh, let's read a, a passage from Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, uh, verse 45, the Bible tells us this, who then is a faithful and sensible slave whom his master has put in charge of his household to give them food at the proper time? That slave whose master finds him working when he comes will be rewarded. See the concept of reward. I assure you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says in his heart, my master is delayed and starts to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with drunkards, that slave's master will come on a day he does not expect and an hour he does not know. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, the concept of reward keeps coming up. When we do the right thing, there is a reward. This is one of the things that we have lost sight of in the church today. I say this, that we know God does not owe us anything. We owe him everything. We will forever be in his debt. And so he, he, he has the right to command us. He has the right to compel us. He has the right to instruct us. He has the right to demand our obedience. We are subjects of the most high God. We are sons and daughters, but we belong wholly to him. And we are at his beck and call. And so whatever we do for the Lord, the Lord more than deserves it. We can never do anything for him that would require him to say thank you. If he says thank you, it's because of his grace and his goodness. It is never something that requires him to say thank you. And so it is so amazing that when he, when we do certain things, he rewards us as if he owed us something. And as if we did something that was not our duty. Everything that we do is our duty, and yet there is still the concept of reward. And later on in this series, we're going to talk about the rewards of faithfulness and you'll be amazed it's mind blowing to see how the lord rewards us and in this passage we are beginning to see some of that he says the slave whose master finds him working when he comes will be rewarded i hope that encourages you to be faithful in service and so he says there is there are those who are faithful and sensible in other words unfaithfulness is senselessness Unfaithfulness in serving God is sheer stupidity. Unfaithfulness in the work of God is a mark of ignorance and folly. And so we want to have that understanding so we can be deprogrammed because we have been programmed to be unfaithful. We have been programmed to be casual about the things of God. We have been programmed to not take things to heart. And even, you see, as a, as a pastor and as a leader, I see people sometimes, they, they fail in the work of God and they don't care. Now, if they were to fail to like 10% of that level in something that belongs to them, it would be as if the sky had fallen on their heads. But when it comes to the work of God, there is this strange disconnect. 
and disinterest. And it's all a mark of demonic oppression because our hearts should be burning for the Lord. Our hearts should be on fire to be, to do good in the house of God, to do good in the work of God, to do good for his name's sake, even to people who don't know him so that his name will be glorified. And so the, we see here that Jesus says, now get this straight, that it's, it's sensible to be faithful. And so to be unfaithful to, as he said in, um, in Luke chapter 16, to not be faithful in the little things, to be dishonest is to be senseless, basically. It's to be foolish. It's absolute folly for a child of God to be unfaithful. And so it says, who then is a faithful and sensible slave whom his master has put in charge of his household? In essence, each and every one of us, we have been entrusted with tasks in his service. When Jesus was leaving the earth, he said, go and make disciples of all nations. So that is a responsibility that accrues to each and every one of us. In what measure are you faithful in serving the Lord? And we can break this down in so many different ways, because in our generation, there are different ways in which we actually serve him to this end. But are you faithful? This, this servant has been given a trust. He has been put in charge of the household. And Jesus says he has an option. He can either be faithful and sensible by doing what has been entrusted to him, taking care of the other servants and doing what he's supposed to do. Or he can be stupid and he can be senseless. He says, and if he doesn't do that, what is he? He's a wicked slave. So there is faithfulness and sensibleness on one hand, and there is wickedness on the other. So when we are not faithful in the work of God, we are not only foolish, we are also wicked. So he says, but if that wicked slave says in his heart, my master is delayed and starts to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with drunkards so that so that slave's master will come on a day he does not expect. So there are so many things in this, in this, in this little passage. It takes, it will take time to unpack everything and we're running out of time. But just hold on to this. The fact that we're called to be faithful and sensible, to not be faithful and sensible in the tasks entrusted to us in the service of God is to be foolish, to be stupid and to be wicked. On the one hand, there is a reward. We saw this earlier when he says that if you if you are faithful in what belongs to another, then you will be given what belongs to you. There will be a reward, and if you are not, you will not. And so this is so crucial. He will put him in charge of all his possessions. There is a promotion. But if you are not faithful, if you do things badly, if you mess things up, if you behave badly. What's going to come? There's going to be some form of punishment. And so we, we realize that we must be busy for God. And the question I'm going to ask you as we conclude this, this, this um, episode is this. How much benefit does God derive from your life? How much benefit does the kingdom derive from your life? Are you faithfully executing the responsibilities entrusted to you? What is your useful, usefulness to the kingdom of God and to the church of God? Do you give your time, your money, and your abilities to God? If everyone in your church were serving like you, where would your church be? And finally, just this very simple question. Are you faithful in service? Shalom, God bless you. I'll see you next week.